find oh, okay good recording in progress <laughs> sorry um i'll show you where we can find all this information in our website at the end of the presentation we will send you an email with key links as well with the links where to find this information where you can download it uh very key places where you should have handy uh information so very important i'm going to give you context because some of you partners across the world know the brand charleston university but they are very familiar with uh charleston university based in sydney melbourne and brisbane so we used to have a partnership with study group australia that partnership is no longer uh, ongoing so right now we don't have campuses in sydney melbourne and brisbane that means no new recru recruitments for these campuses at the moment so um if you have students interested in in the big cities in the main cities we don't have an option right now so international students cannot be accepted in charleston university sydney melbourne or brisbane right now we're located in regional new south wales and i'm going to show you as well where are we located so that's very important because sometimes we start with the with the presentation and some uh some of the uh, agents who are familiar with the brand will start wondering why so many things don't make sense so the reason is because we're located in regional and not anymore in the big cities so why to study at charles city regional so we have been in regional cities for more than 30 years uh we are right now the largest provider a uh, public university uh, in New South Wales outside the big cities. So we have more than 43,000 students at the moment. Um, we offer more than 300 programs across different fields of study. Uh, for international students, we offer 60 of these programs, uh, which is still a, way, uh, a, a wide range of uh, programs in different fields. And this, we, we see it as an advantage as well, because sometimes agents think that uh, Charleston University only offers um, programs in business, which is why we were known in the city campuses. Now, in the regional cities, we have programs from nursing, we have uh, vet science, medical radiation, IT, different fields. So very important that if you have a student who is not really going for the common thing, which is business and IT, probably we have a program for, for your students as well. So check with us if you're not sure about this. We're a multi-campus university. So we have five campuses where we can accept international students. So normally if you go to our website, you will see that we have more than 12 campuses, but we cannot accept students in all our campuses. So we, I'll show you which campuses we can accept international students. And this is one of the, the key selling points, and this is one of the, the, the areas that students, especially in Southeast Asia, South Asia, are going to look into very importantly is the graduate employment rate. So what is this? So the graduate employment rate is based on a survey in Australia. So they check with them after three months after they graduate, then five years. They, they do different checks on students. So I, students from Chester University always are preferred by employers in Australia. So after, after they finish the program, they get fastly employed. And not only that, they also get the high uh, rates and salaries. That is very important for your students where you work, you, the markets you work for, because these students, they are always looking into the return of investment. So if I'm going to invest all this money to come to Australia, what it is in, in there for me and one of the reasons is okay after you finish with the postgraduate rights you will have the recognition of a massive brand which is charleston university charleston university is a brand that pretty much every australian recognizes because we work with many governmental bodies in australia we work with the police force in australia we train all the police force in new south wales uh, we do a lot of uh, engagement with the industry private and public and that's the main reason why Charleston University um, carries this brand name. So name is a big important for your students when they're planning to come to Australia because they will have the opportunity after they graduate to work and be preferred to uh, get that employment. Um, as you can see from our logo, and I'm going to get back to this one, 
we always have these uh, hands coming out from the walls and it's because we are very hands-on. So the university is probably pushing that most of the programs have been reviewed to make them more practical. So right now, all our programs for international students are practical and have a practical component. That means they have an internship or a group placement. Some of them are paid, some of them are not paid. So we will show you that as well as we go on the programs. Connection with the industry, that is one of the key parts of our university. So some of the big universities in Australia, and this is not to say this is wrong, but most unis, the big ones especially, they specialize too much in the academic part of it, and they forget a little bit of the industry connection. Whereas we as university, we charge to university, we want the, all our programs, all, all our students are connected to the industry, not only because that always land their knowledge into what it is actually useful, but also because they will develop these connections with the industry. Students are more than a number. Yeah, that's pretty much all universities in Australia. We are heading towards this, um, but we also want to make uh, sure that the students are always taken care of. Uh, our academics are excellent in all the areas that they work. Um, we have uh, our big research area as well. So we bring big candidates from all over the world that also work with us in the classrooms. For those who are very interested in the university profile, we're very focusing the um, sustainability. We were the first carbon neutral university in Australia. And here it comes the most important part, like really all this is branding, why the university or that. But now here we're gonna learn really what's gonna be useful for you as as, as agent to sell the programs and why send students to a regional city. So we know that some students, especially in Southeast Asia, they have very clear they wanna go to Sydney, Melbourne, or Brisbane. It's gonna be very hard for us to move those students to a regional city. So we know that some students are open to study in regional cities. And the main reason what is driving these studies to regional is the postgraduate rights. So we have right now all of our five campuses apply for the four years postgraduate rights. That means that if a student um, study more than two years in a program that is more than two years, they can apply for the, the three plus two. Uh, apparently now it's five years for postgraduate rights. Um, for master's degrees. So this is something that US agents have to check with a migration agent. Unfortunately, we as university, we cannot promote it heavily with students because obviously this is something that is given by the Australian government and it shouldn't be the reason why a student comes to study with us. But we know that this is one of the key factors why students are coming to regional city. So I always tell student, uh, students, uh, if you're planning to come to Australia, Regional is always a really good first step to come to Australia. If you have the big picture of migration, if you have the big picture of coming to Australia, gain um, um, perhaps a work experience and then going back home, because you're going to have all these four, five, three or four uh, postgraduate rights um, up to five years. So um, it makes a lot of sense to come to a regional city because you're going to have the possibility to actually engage in professional work after you graduate and get this recognition when you go back to your home country or if you plan to migrate obviously there are heaps of uh, possibilities if you come to study to a regional city and stay after graduation so this is big for uh, Charleston University at the moment and we've seen a lot of the students from nursing for IT for accounting coming to study with us because they know that it's a pathway for migration as well so I always tell them, um, coming to regional, it's a first step in your life. It's a first step in your career. After you complete your studies, after you complete your qualification, you will be ready to move wherever you want to, not only in Australia, but also in other places in the world. So our programs are recognized in Hong Kong. They're recognized in Canada. They're recognized in many places in Europe. So uh, for those who have that big mind, they uh, come to regional, it's a great opportunity for them to uh, make the dream come true. And there, when we say all these, it sounds like, ah, uh, yeah, the same thing that everybody says. But uh, reality is that our students, because the cost of living is cheaper in regional cities and the programs are relatively inexpensive compared to the big cities, 
students can actually finish the project. So we see a lot of students coming to Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and being unable to finish the program because financially they get crushed. Whereas when they come to a regional city, the cost of living makes less pressure for them so they can focus more on the studies and they can actually finish the, the full project of coming to study to Australia. So very important things, financial, government um, um, incentives to come to regional, quality of education that is big for us, and obviously um, the recognition of a brand that is Charleston University that a student that graduates with us is going to carry this with them uh, after graduation. We have all the beautiful things around regional cities, like we have amazing environment, we have an amazing community that is very supportive as well. This is something that students, when they are offshore, oversee a little bit. They don't see the importance of being in a community that uh, is supportive, because when they come here to Australia, they're going to find out that they're going to make more Australian friends when they are in regional cities. And that's going to help them to develop also their language skills and the social skills. So all these soft skills are crucial for finding jobs after graduation. So when a student graduated from Charleston University goes for an interview for a job, they're going to be preferred because their accent is going to be more clear. They're going to be able to actually understand the way Australians do business more clearly. Whereas when they go to the big cities, yes, they can do that as well, but because there are more people from the same country, Normally, students live in that bubble of the same community, so their language doesn't develop as well. Their understanding of the Australian culture doesn't really go that far. And this is something that we sometimes don't see and students don't see clearly, but it actually makes a massive difference. And that's one of the reasons why, alongside with the quality of education, uh, our students bring that soft skills that makes them preferable at the workplace. Uh, Let's go down to where we are and what we offer in terms of um, programs. So we're located in five regional uh, locations that where we can accept, accept international students. As I said, if you go to our website, you will see far more campuses, but we cannot accept students in those campuses, only can accept international students in these five campuses. So we have Albury, Wagga, Bathurst, Orange and Port Macquarie. Sydney and Melbourne are here for reference, but we don't accept students there. So basically, we're I'm right now uh, broadcasting here from Bathurst, uh, which is three hours and a half drive from Sydney. Orange is 45 minutes away from Bathurst. Wagga is a little bit further down, um, but it's around five to six hours from Sydney and three hours from Bathurst. Albury Wodong is closer to Melbourne, three hours and a half driving. And Port Macquarie, where we have some most of our master programs, master degrees, are a four hours and a half drive from Sydney. They are all well connected to Sydney and Melbourne, so they all have airports and very frequent flights. So if a student wants to go for a weekend to Sydney, very easy, it's very affordable. Is the not that they, when they go to regional city, they are going to be disconnected and, and completely remotely um, um, isolated for the rest of Australia. They actually, there is a really good connection in, in, in roads and uh, airways for connecting to the main cities. Albury Wodonga, we have, uh, as, as you can see here, it's, uh, it's actually two cities. It's Albury in the side of Victoria and Wodonga on the side of New South Wales. So it's around 100,000 people living around this area where makes the possibility for students to find employment very easily. Wagga Wagga, we call it just Wagga. Uh, we have their, one of the fastest growing cities in New South Wales. So it's very close to Canberra. And also it's our largest campus where we started as a university as well. Orange, we have mostly our health programs there. It's not a big campus, but it's very, cozy and very welcoming with our international students and Bathurst where, where I am. Um, it's a big campus. We have several types of accommodation here and um, the facilities of the university are spectacular. So I always recommend this campus, not only because I live and work here in, in Bathurst, but also because it all is very close to Sydney. Port Macquarie is our newest campus. It's on the coastline that you can see here. 
So Port Macquarie has a very similar lifestyle than Sydney for those who are looking to uh, want to experience the coast, I want to experience the nature. So Port Macquarie has that. It's a very um, fast growing city as well. And there are lots of opportunities for students to engage in professional work in this area. If you wanna know more about our campuses, about the cities, this is very important. We have uh, our website and I'll show you where you can find more information. We have videos, we have uh, student testimonials about what they do every day. So I always encourage agents to uh, follow us on Facebook because we always, always posting about uh, what's happening in the cities, what they look like. So it's always good that you start to get to know about these regional cities as well. Um, as a university, we offer campus facilities in, and we try to excel in all the areas, not only in the social part of it, but also obviously in the academic and teaching facilities. Um, so we have state-of-the-art scientific and computer labs, television studios, um, simulation hospitals for nursing and health-related sciences. We have, this is just to mention a few. I could spend only one hour just showing you about our facilities, but you know that um, some universities have these. We are one of those universities who invest heavily in research and teaching facilities. Also, we have um, social uh, facilities. So students have, we have um, gyms on campus, we have sport facilities, we have uh, canteens and areas where, where students can go and have food in, on campus, several options. But one of the interesting ones is the accommodation on campus that some universities in the big city have them, but are very expensive. Whereas in regional, students can afford to live on campus and which means they don't have to travel far. They're just 20 meters away from classroom and they don't have to spend in transport system. Uh, pr prices range between $160 and $300 per week. This includes bills and this also includes um, a four niche room. So they don't have to share the room. They have already there a desk, they have a bed. So students have, have only pretty much bring their things that come they, they come from overseas. Um, this type of accommodation changes depending from campus to campus. And within the campuses, we have different types. So that's why the prices range from 160 to 300. It's because some of them, they are newer than the others, but even the cheapest one is really good quality. So um, I always encourage students to come first at least one or two months to accommodation on campus because that's gonna help with the adaptation. And then they can actually move out. They don't have to stay on campus, but um, it always brings that experience and they're gonna make a lot more Australian friends if they stay on campus. Students, we look after them. So I'm not gonna um, spend a lot of time here in this. You probably know that most universities have it. We offer all sorts of support in terms of academic skills, English skills, um, counseling, psychological support. So very important that you know that we have all that as well. The big part of um, for your markets is the scholarships. So we used to have a range of scholarships that were a 10%, 15%, 20%, and it was a little bit confusing. So right now, what we decided to do was just to move to just one type of scholarship across the all the programs, which is a 20%. So it's gonna be easier for you to remember that with Charleston University, most programs have the 20% scholarship. When I say most programs is because there are very few exceptions, such as um, research programs. So PhDs or masters for research, Online programs don't, don't, don't actually qualify for the 20%. Also very selected programs that are very uh, competitive, such as the dentist, dent, dentistry and vet science. So th those are the only exceptions. Other than that, all our programs have um, 20% scholarship, which is very interesting is that this uh, scholarship is for the duration of the program. So it's not only for the first semester, which some universities are doing, some units have 30%, but it's just for the first semester, the first year. Whereas with us, it's 20% for the duration of the program, which if the students do the maths, uh, it's a really good deal. 
especially considering that the price tag of our programs already very low before this scholarship. And when we apply this scholarship, is even more competitive. And we say, obviously, students will find cheaper options in the market, but not with the quality that we offer, not with the experience that we have. So value for money, our programs are very competitive in the market. Um, very important, this scholarship doesn't have any special eligibility. So pretty much if the student gets the offer letter, automatically they will receive the scholarship with it. If you want to check more, please click here. I'm going to send you the link for downloading this presentation and the link for the scholarship as well, so you can read more or if you have more questions about that. Uh, we have several areas where we have programs, business, communication, nursing, policing, psychology. So whenever you have a student that's not really from uh, the typical programs that you have, check with us. We probably have not as I said before. I want to um, show you key programs that in Southeast Asia and South Asia, we know they are key. Also, on camp, like people who is in Australia, on short students, they want to see these programs because several reasons. One of those is um, migration uh, outcomes that they can have with this. Sorry. Um, so one of the key ones is the Masters of Professional Accounting. Uh, professional practice. So sorry about the professional professional, but the reason why they wanted to put the double name in there is because this program has been reviewed recently and was included one semester of practical component in the industry. So students spend one semester in a workplace that counts as work experience. So when they finish with Charles Street University, they have, it's a program of two years uh, so they get the postgraduate rights, they get work experience that they can use in their resume, and they have obviously the backup of Charles State University. Basically, they have a package of success for them to continue working. And that's why the professional practice part of the name. So this program uh, in next intake is February. Um, it's available in Port Macquarie, 32,000 per year. Uh, after the scholarship, 25,600. Students only have to pay per semester, even for the COE. If they want to get the COE for applying for a visa, they only have to pay 12,800, which is the equivalent for four subjects of study. Um, same format for the Master's of Professional Information Technology, also very popular, especially in Southeast Asia and South Asia. We pretty much is our key program at the moment. And it's not only key program because of the features it has, it's also because uh, it's one of the programs that we have best outcomes. So it's the number one university for graduate salaries. So students who study with us, they go to the market after graduation and they really get the best jobs. Uh, same two years, same February, and same in Paul Macquarie campus. After scholarship, 27,000. Per semester, 13,568. So if you see the prices are very competitive after scholarship, uh, students normally, if they want to go to Sydney or Melbourne, they will find these prices for a private provider, which is not going to be the same, especially when it comes down to the experience and the soft skills they develop, uh, which Charles Street University, they get far more of that. This is our newest program, and this is the last program that I'm going to show you. All the other programs are going to just name them, but this is the newest program that we're having massive numbers of students really interested in this. And if you're probably in um, Malaysia, in um, um, any anywhere in Southeast Asia, you, you will find a lot of interest. The students are very in studying agriculture, not only because they are interested in the topic, but also because their governments are supporting them with some scholarship to, to study this. So uh, also to your program, next in Czech February, this program is available in Wagga Wagga. Um, after scholarship, 26,560, 13,200 for the first semester. Remember that the scholarship is ongoing. It's for the duration of the program. 
that seed in terms of key programs, we also have um, undergraduate programs. We have nursing, we have uh, accounting, we have business, we have several areas. I'm gonna give you also a little bit of a summary after the presentation where you will have um, a table where you can see all these details very easily. Um, moving on to where to find information and here I'm gonna um, leave the presentation. I'm gonna go to the website so you will be able to find yourself the information and you don't have to rely on us sometimes because of the time zone or we're probably not able to answer right away you will be able to find information by yourselves in our website so um let me see can you see you can you still see my my can you now see my my browser excellent yes so whenever you go to google and let's say you want to know about the Master's of Profession uh, Agricultural Science, you Google Agricultural Science CSU, and it will tell it will send you here. So one, once you land here, all this information that is here is for domestic students. So that is not relevant for you. This is the part that is relevant for you. So this program is on campus. If it says online only, means that the program is not eligible for a student visa. So very important that, is that means the student cannot travel to Australia. If it says on campus, yes, and it will show you the campus. Entry requirements, you will see, you click here and it will tell you what are the entry requirements, pretty much having a um, bachelor's degree or equivalent to an Australian degree. So you must know as agents in your home, home country, what is an equivalent to an Australian bachelor's degree. If it's uh, equivalent, we will accept it. Um, here you will be able to find all information about the programs, and this is the same format for all the programs. So this is the good thing. That's what I'm showing you this because you will be able to find easily key selling points of the program. Sometimes obviously I am not an expert in agriculture or IT, but every time I want to show it to a student, I come to the, the source and I show them, look, here you can find all the information about the program. And if the student wants to see the subjects, we can actually click here on the uh, left-hand side and you will see the full list of subjects. Click on the subject and see how the, what, what the subject is about. So very, very important because some students, especially in the IT sector, or when it comes very technical, they want to know all the technicalities, what program um, I'm looking into, what are the studies, what, uh, what technologies are we using? And that is all specified in the subject list. Uh, fees also, if you're not sure about the fees, you can select here um, what are the fees for your international students. So I, I think this is this hasn't been updated yet, but you click here and it will show you here the 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 price. So this is something that needs to be fixed this week, but uh, you will be able to find it very easily. That is all I wanted to show you there uh, from the presentation. Um, how to submit an application with us. So I'm pretty sure you are familiar with StudyLink. So we only accept applications through StudyLink. The StudyLink uh, has online format, so you don't have to fill up a PDF anymore. We don't accept PDF applications. You have to submit it through here. If you need support and training on this, let us know. We can always uh, connect you with StudyLink to, to get you on board with Study, with how it works yeah that's that's all good that they'll they'll apply through through us um ah, so yeah, if there's any application support they'll uh, come through us at yes education fantastic fantastic yeah that, that makes it a lot easier uh, to to manage um but always whenever you're going to submit an application even if you have a centralized application center us agents from your home country try to gather as much information as possible of the student in terms of academic, resume, passport, English language. So the more information you have, the faster the application is going to flow through. And obviously, if you only have one thing of the student, let's say you only have the academic part of the student, yes, you can submit an application with us, but that application is not going to move. So it's not, the, the student is not going to have a, an offer letter until we have the English, until we, we have more information. So our admissions team is very responsive and they're going to come back to you every time that is missing something. But if you provide the basic information, uh, which is uh, 
the academic part, the English requirement, resume, uh, I think the application is going to get through very quickly. Very important, and this is perhaps the main um, purpose of this, this slide, is the verification of documents. So we have partners, we have, we have you as our partners. Basically, one of the main reasons is to verify that documents are legit, that they haven't been altered. Um, obviously, sometimes we don't know when a document it is, but you do the best you can to actually see that the document is real and that actually belongs to the student. Um, when we have a visa rejection and the, the um, Home Affairs Department says, we know that the student in the passport is not the student who's applying, we're going to blame the agent because that's one of the basic things that we expect from the agent is to check that the identity of the person who applies is actually the person on the passport. We normally don't have that much, but we have had a few cases where that happens. How to apply, you submit the application to Stradlink, and then after admissions checks that the student is eligible academically and English-wise, they're going to ask the student to fill up a GTE form. So this GTE form, it's an online version of it, and it goes to the student and to the agent, the link. So the student is meant to fill up the GTE form for us, but as agents, you can help the student to fill it up correctly. So we have seen students who do it themselves, and sometimes they messed up because they provide conflicted information with what was provided in the original application form. So very important that US agents, when the student receives the link for the GT, get uh, in contact with the student, set up an appointment with them, and fill it up together. So you make sure that all the information that is provided to the university is consistent, is solid, and makes sense to the application. Um, I think that is the most important part of the, 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 the GT process. So you know that you don't have to submit GT from the beginning. It comes to you after you submit the application. That's pretty much the refresh training that we have for you today. Uh, I'm going to show you this document. So I'm going to send you this one. I'm going to send you, we have one for Nepal, we have one for Ensure. It's basically the same information. The only reason why it changes is because it has different entry requirement academically. But um, if you're from um, Vietnam, we can check what's the entry requirement for your students there. Uh, but in general, the information that we have here, this is like a summary of this presentation today. You will have the, the, the key reasons, the key selling points. You will have here the QR codes where you can find more material, the course list, our Facebook, our locations. And this is a very useful part. I've seen a lot of agents printing this and having nest next to their desk is because it gives you a very quick outlook of um, the fees and what's the IELTS requirement and where it's the campus location for the program. So these are key programs that we have, Bachelor of Information Technology, Business, Nursing, Agriculture, Social Work, Accounting, and for postgraduate, the ones that I show you as well in the presentation. So very important for the postgraduate programs, they are all, we have very accessible IELTS. So it's one of the easiest ones perhaps in Australia uh, is six overall, no band below 5.5. That is pretty good for your markets because, unfortunately, as you can see here in the in, in the summary, we don't have Elicus providers and we cannot package with any English provider uh, school in Australia. So that means if your student doesn't meet the English requirement, they cannot apply with us. So once they have all the English requirement, they can apply with us. That's why we probably have a little that little flexibility with that. Um, have in mind that for the Masters of Accounting, uh, writing has to be in six. That's the only one. But other than that, is six, no one below 5.5. Do you have any questions, guys? Um, Seb, I just wanted yeah. to mention as well, um, because you, you mentioned the deposits for the offshore, um, but for onshore deposit for COE, it's 3,000. So... Yeah. 
Um, and I've That's also great. in the chat, I have sent uh, this form, Seb, but I've sent the on onshore version. So they have a copy of that. And I've also um, attached the 2023 new course guide that has everything um, in there. This one here is the quick reference guide, but I've also attached the full course guide. So I guess we can open up to questions for any of um, your agents there. Before, yeah, that's, before we that's continue good. Thanks. With that, so, so, that. Sorry, Bo and Bobby. Uh, quickly, just uh, this, these links here, they're going to send you. So what Bobby was saying about the course list, you can click here, uh, scan this and going to send you to the, um, the course guide and the training material for agents. We have set up a website. So if you go to the link here, uh, we have a link that goes here, actually. I'm going to send yeah. you the link as well. And here you will find more information, like let's say you want uh, more training. We have a training session there. Here's where you can download the training session that we did today. So if you click here, you start a training session. And um, you're going to be able to download here in the part one, download the presentation we had today. So if you want the presentation, you can download it here. It comes down in a PDF, so it's very easy for you to download. And if you want to, you can go ahead and continue with the training and take the test. So we require every branch of your agency has at least one person who has presented the test. So once you finish the test, you have, you're going to send us the screenshot to the international client. You follow the instructions. It's so in there very important for your team also to have this uh, training and that you go through the training and send us the presentation as part of the uh, commitment that our agents have with us. Uh, I think that's it. That's all I have. If you have any questions, I guess we're going to open the floor. Great. Um, yeah, sure. If, um, if anyone does have any questions now uh, for offshore in particular, uh, I think now would be a good time, but if not, we can uh, we can move those questions to the end. So, I'm not sure if yeah. anyone has any quick questions right right now. Uh, I think I've also shared our contact handle. details as well. So, sure, if, if they want to make a note of the contact for uh, myself and Seb, and then they can um, email us or WhatsApp. We we um, we do that regularly. So, if anyone thinks of anything later on, if they can't think of anything right now, they can also ask us questions. Fantastic. All right. I think we might keep going then. Um, sometimes it takes a bit of time for the questions to come in. So um, maybe- Absolutely. And, and look, most, most, most of the questions normally come to an agent when they have a student in front of them. Yes, so exactly. that's why we always very accessible and feel free to always contact us. I mean, your team in Nepal, your teams in other parts of the world, they have always contact us. So if you're in other countries, uh, feel free to contact us. We're always very accessible. Great, great. Yeah, I think. Um... Yeah, I think we can we can um, move on to Barbie and perhaps we'll do all the questions at, at the end. Okay, yeah. So from from my side, I mean the presentation is um, much the same thing for onshore. Okay, mm -hmm. um, nursing is probably our, our most popular program for the onshore market, and um, we have our applications open for February intake already. Um, the seats will be very limited. So I do suggest if your students do want to commence with us that they get in and get their applications in and get COEs issued early. Um, obviously for nursing, we will need an IELTS 7.0 in each band, um, which is the same requirement for every provider who's doing nursing. So it's not actually a university requirement it's an APRA requirement um, so nursing is extremely popular and it is available 
at four locations uh, for, for study. And um, usually in the February intake, we will have it available in the four different locations, Albury, Wagga, Bathurst and Port Macquarie. And then we will have again in July another intake, um, which usually will only be at the Bathurst campus. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. as I said, the seats are limited. So there's a certain number of seats each campus. And once they are full, um, that will be it. So we estimate that, you know, by October, November, we'll probably should be looking at quite full. So I just um, encourage the applications to come early if they want nursing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's very crucial indeed. Very popular. Mm. as always nursing yeah great great um regarding how about that, any other other courses that are um, pretty popular right now um, with csu onshore yeah onshore is um it masters of it which we have in the port macquarie campus um mm. and then we do have some social work which also has quite a high um, IELTS entry as well. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a look at the uh, fact sheet that I sent through in the chat uh, for the onshore, those are the key areas that um, our students are looking at and the prices there are listed in the fact sheet. So um, we've got the 20% scholarship, which is available for both on and offshore, which is great. Mm -hmm. And the main area of interest for onshore as well is the nursing social work um, it accounting um, and that one is available at port macquarie as well so it and accounting is port macquarie nursing is in the four locations um, social work is wagga wagga okay and then mm -hmm. uh, for the masters as seb already mentioned one of the i guess uh key things that students do like to know is that we have an entry of the 6.0 for the masters usually masters programs are 6.5 so we mm -hmm. find this quite attractive for those who maybe haven't reached that IELTS yet um, and rather than doing English they can come straight to us um, yeah. yeah perfect perfect and you mentioned as well on the onshore COE deposit is three thousand three thousand yeah so for, for, for offshore, all courses they, is that uh, yeah, all courses is three thousand COE deposit. Right. Yeah, at the moment that's that's the the, the going rate for us. Um, but in the future, we we probably you know it might go up a little bit, but um, it'll still be very competitive. But at the moment, yeah, it's only a three thousand um, deposit mm. for the COE to be issued. So that means they can secure their place, especially for nursing. Um, they don't have mm -hmm. to leave a huge deposit. We can get their offer signed and coe issued and that holds that place for them so we will also be re yeah we will require the the balance of the payment at least one month before commencement um that's because it is a you know very limited number of seats and we need to make sure that the students who have you know the coe issue do um go through because if for example for some reason they didn't we'd still have some time to fill the spots we don't want to we don't want to be left with any empty seats as you can imagine so mm -hmm. yeah exactly um right. I, think uh, I have a, a question have a there quick... yes there's a question here for offshore vietnam yeah um yeah the question's from not Jung, who says, um, would you mind letting us know about the GTE uh, for international students offshore in Vietnam? Uh, also, any financial requirement for high risk and low risk areas? Thank you. Yeah, uh, good question, because we used to have a classification before in terms of GTE assessment for uh, different uh, level risk pro, uh, countries. Uh, right now, it's all across the board is the same. Uh, financial documents are crucial. We ask financial documents. Uh, Vietnam is a country that we require financial documents. Um, but admissions will ask you specifically because depending on what has been submitted, they will ask you for specific documentation. 
So normally it will be the same as any other university, bank statements or whatever financials, whatever that's gonna show the financial capabilities of uh, the student and the family. In terms of GTE, same as any university because the GTE is pretty much based on the, what did we try to do with the GTE is to assess the eligibility of the student for a visa. So you as agents, you have more experience perhaps than us when a student is actually eligible for a student visa. Uh, very important to know that coming to a regional city is not e easier than going to a big city in terms of GT, in terms of visa eligibility, because there is the belief that because the student's gonna apply for a regional city, they're gonna have more easily a visa, which is not the case really. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. it's the same as for a student that goes to city in Melbourne or Brisbane, um, but the student has to go through an extra step that uh, probably the immigration department wants to know is the, that they if they know where they're going. So sometimes we've seen that the student is contacted uh, just to check the, the Australian government wants to know that the student knows where they're going because we have had cases of seeing. Great. I hope that I have, with GT, GT is a very complex topic, um, but I'm pretty sure that US agents, you have had a lot of uh, experience with the eligibility of the students. So it's pretty much the same yeah. that the student mm -hmm. gap, the gaps, obviously that the gaps make sense in the life of the student. So if a student mm -hmm. has more than two years gap without any reason, it's obviously, a big red flag for yeah. for our admissions team and it's going to be for visa eligibility that kind of things in terms yeah. of for instance um couples uh, people with a husband or a wife yes we can accept that so we have a lot of our students they come with the partners so that's not an issue um I, we don't have any special requirement for gts really yeah Thanks a lot, uh, Sebastian. That's good. Yeah, and just to just to make note, um, yes, a lot of our partners are uh, are familiar with GT, but yeah, some some universities may require some some different documents at different stages. So yeah, it's good and yeah, good to go over that. Um, we just got another question here uh, from Ramona, who asks, "How about financial documents if they're applying from Spain? Whether whether you know about that from from Europe." In particular yeah so uh european countries they have a, a very different uh, approach for immigration so they don't, don't need to submit a, a financial documents from the beginning but admissions may ask so mm -hmm. along the way when the student submits the application as remember that the gt comes after the submitting the application Admissions, when they ask you for uh, the GT, they will ask you for what documents need to be submitted. But generally, mm -hmm. European countries and some South American countries don't need to submit uh, financial documents. Great. Uh, I see someone's got their hand up. Uh, Dorji, I'm not sure if you had a question there for, for CSU today. And anyone else as well. I see a lot of participants from from Vietnam, which is good. It'd be great to get some more Vietnamese students for CSU. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions um, regarding anything uh, at CSU, now is the, the best time. Uh, both Sebastian and, and Barbie are um, more than equipped uh, to answer. And of course, they're long-term staff there. So it'd be good to hear from their, their insights um, about campus life as well, perhaps if you'd like to ask. Um, I see there's some from Indonesia as well, which is good. Yeah, how about um, onshore, Barbie? Um, any other particular trends that you're seeing um, onshore that, that could be of note uh, to, to our partners or any yeah, other look, crucial information? I think um, traditionally we had a lot of South Asia students coming uh, yep. to the regional Definitely. locations. But um, talking with uh, agents over the last few months, I have to say 
they're starting to have an interest in the Southeast Asia. So um, mm -hmm. Indonesia and Vietnam are now uh, more popular in, in their thought process to moving regional for onshore. And even I've had quite a few queries for some of the Chinese market. So I think yeah. um, they're starting to branch out and um, widening their horizons. And so I think over the next 12 months, we will see an increase in, say, Indonesia and Vietnam markets. Mm, that's good. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is great really because good. obviously we yeah. want to have diversity um yeah. and um you know it's it it i as i said i went for the first time to bathurst um last week and met mm -hmm. the team and had a look around the campus and i was quite amazed at how how it looked and it was you know big and it had like a, a cafe um mm -hmm. and they had all the nursing students in their uniforms and they had the paramedics so all the paramedics learning to be ambulance drivers things like that or, mm -hmm. or paramedics I should say and then um, they were all wearing their uniform as well so it it was buzzing it was really exciting to see mm. everything in action and seeing the community spirit um, there's a lot mm. of opportunity for students to live in those regional areas and get good jobs um, lots of little restaurants cafes um, things like that so yeah. And even Port Macquarie, I ha I've been there on a personal level, not for the campus, but Port mm -hmm. Macquarie is such a great place to live and work and study. It's only around four hours north of Sydney and most people go there for holidays because it's just a, a really beautiful coastal harbour side. Um, they have the whale watching there, dolphins, the campus from from what I've seen, I'm going up in a few weeks' time, so I'll get to see it firsthand. Looks amazing. That's where a lot of our um, our uh, business studies are, but also some of our nursing. They have um, they have a fantastic um, a simulated hospital where the nursing students can actually practice and learn everything about their nursing with their their dummies that are like live people and they can move their eyes and they take their blood pressure and it's a really fantastic simulated hospital and I will also share the link of that video that shows the campus and also um, the simulated hospital that when you see it um, I'm sure students who are wanting to come from overseas to Australia would be quite fascinated and the lifestyle that they have there as well. So I'm going to share that in the chat as well. So just give me a moment. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Barbara. That's great. Um, yeah, I also want to say from a local point of view, um, a lot of us do like to get to Port Macquarie. It is quite a uh, famous town for people from Sydney to escape the city for, for the weekend, not, not too far away. Um, I remember growing up in Sydney, a lot of people did go to Port Macquarie indeed. So. Uh, definitely a place where international students can really enjoy uh, the lifestyle there as, as well. In fact, all of the campuses at um, CSU are really, really unique or, or really different as well. And I think each student can get a lot of benefit from uh, those, those locations. So uh, I think we've hit uh, just over the time limit now. So that's really good. Um, if there were any final questions, um, perhaps we could fit in one more if anyone did have any quick ones. Um, but otherwise, I think um, everything was really covered well uh, from Barbie and, and Sebastian today. Um, and then, of course, I will supply everyone with the recording and the presentation um, as well. And all of these links that um, Barbie has, has given to us um, as well. Lots of, lots of good collateral here that we can use to, to share with our, our students. Great. Um, yeah, also, um, Barbie, I think there could be some onshore uh, Chinese students uh, as well. Yeah, I, I've started to see a bit of an well. interest. I think for, you'll start to see some. Yeah, yes, which is fantastic because, you know, that's what we want. We want diversity. Um, yeah. And and that's it's great to see some of the other areas making that transition into regional. Yes. Another Barbie mentions um, about the 
nationality mix. Um, that's one of the great things from from Charleston University is that most of most of our students are actually local students, domestic students from Australia. So around eighty to ninety percent of our students are from Australia, and that mm. makes a big difference with other universities and private colleges in Sydney, where most of the students are international students. Mm. And when it comes down to improving the level of English, understanding more about Australian culture, that makes a big difference. And also the environment. So the vibe when student an international student arrives to our campus. They feel welcome and they feel like everybody wants to get to know the international person. Yeah, Whereas when exactly. they go to Sydney, Melbourne, it's so international that yeah, it's it's all the same. Whereas international students here, they find this amazing um, nationality mix. Not only because we have obviously international students from different parts of the world, but also Australian people. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I hundred percent agree on that. Uh, yeah. So I think that. Uh, if there's no more questions, I think that will um, bring about the end of the, the webinar today. And if anyone did have any further questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with myself yeah. as well. And if you did have any uh, applications straight away as well, um, please let myself know or any of the Yes Education team members um, where you are located know, and we'll, we'll get an application together for you, um, especially what those ones for nursing, social work. Um, be good to get those ones in early in particular uh, as well, considering how, how popular they are. All right, um, Barbie and Seb, thanks yeah, again. Thank you. Thank you so much, much for having us today. Yes. And uh, thanks both for putting this together so that everyone um, got to experience a little bit more about CSU. Yes, very good. Very good. No, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thanks Seb, again. as well. Thank thanks, Seb, for thank all your everybody. talking. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, everyone. Guys, Have a thank good you. afternoon. See ya. Bye bye. Bye bye.